welcome back. And here is Azir News for today. Edward killed during earthquake in Indonesia. This earthquake in East Java has caused panic among residents in the area. At least eight people are killed after 6.7 magnitude quake struck off the main island of Indonesia as the country sees a heavy month of natural disasters. Indonesia is still dealing with the aftermath of a tropical cyclone in East Flores and now this earthquake in East Java has caused panic among residents in the area. The quake, together with several aftershocks, damaged hundreds of homes, schools and government offices in the region. Authorities are now working on recovery efforts to help those who have been displaced in the quake. Local residents say there are dozens of people that have lost their homes and they are in need of immediate help, especially with basic necessities. As a community, we are helping those who have been affected. We are divide ourselves into groups to help them. We are waiting for aid from the government. Residents here no food. Many of them are afraid to go back to their homes in case of aftershocks. According to local authorities in Majian village, at least 90% of homes are now reduced to rubble and those residents are still waiting for aid from the national government. We are still collecting data to find out how many people are affected and which areas are in need of help. I have already put out an urgent order. We are gathering and sending help as soon as possible. Experts say that Indonesia is still in the middle of the rainy season and head of the country's earthquake and tsunami center are urging those in the affected areas to stay alert because heavy rains in the coming days could possibly bring about flash floods and landslides. Aung San Suu Kyi requests to meet her lawyer. Myanmar's detained government leader Aung San Suu Kyi asked a court to allow her to meet her lawyers in person as she appears at hearing via video link to face charges brought by the military junta that could see her jailed for years. As the champion of decades of struggle against military rule appeared for the hearing, her supporters called for people to show their opposition to a February 1st coup during this week's traditional New Year holiday in the largely Buddhist country. Her other lawyer, Kin Man Zhao, says Suchi looked healthy as she repeated a request to meet her lawyers face to face. The next hearing is on April 26. Kin adds an additional complaint against her is filed related to coronavirus rules. The coup has plunged Myanmar into crisis after 10 years of tentative steps toward democracy as the military stepped back from politics and allowed Suu Kyi to form a government after her party swept a 2015 election. The military says it had overthrew her government because a November election again won by her party was reached, but the election commission dismissed the accusation. Bangkok prepares 10,000 hospital bed after the cases increase in the country. A health official says Thailand is planning to set up 10,000 field hospital beds in the capital to gain public confidence as the country deals with a jump in daily COVID-19 cases following a new wave of infections and a highly contagious variant. At least a dozen Bangkok hospitals report they had stopped testing for the virus due to a lack of test kit supplies or capacity due to the new wave. This is thought to be the worst for us since the outbreak, but to learn the virus enable us to improve our health services. We are confident to deal with it. According to the COVID-19 Information Center, Thailand reported 789 new coronavirus infections and one new death as the country deals with a fresh wave of infections after tackling earlier outbreaks. The new case takes the total number of infections to 31,658 with 97 deaths. Vietnamese and American communities start self-defense corps in a wake of Atlanta shootings. Oh, so. Just to break free, this one actually... Okay. 
Vietnamese and American communities start self-defense courses and assert themselves in the face of racism, rebranding this charity as a social justice movement. The critical moment came when a gunman opened fire at three Atlanta areas pass, killing eight people, including six Asian American women. And enough is enough. When you get the shooting came as hate crimes against Asian Americans surge because of racist rhetoric linking them to the global spread of the coronavirus. Nguyen says they have received distribution of 30 million US dollar worth of personal protective equipment for healthcare workers and meals to isolated seniors. Other officials and police officers have visited to teach students and community members how to avoid become a victim and what to do in case of hate incident. Local police including Garden Grove Police Department Community Liaison Kelly Wynn. The city also neighbors Huntington Beach in Orange County where white supremacists gather for periodic demonstrations. Nguyen was born in Vietnam, brought to the United States at age 1 and raised in Garden Grove site of the largest ethnic community of Vietnamese outside Vietnam. Advanced Beauty College in his family's business. The Chinese president welcomes 27 new ambassadors to China. Chinese President Xi Jinping welcomes a total of 29 new ambassadors to China and expressed his good wishes to them after receiving the credentials at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. He stresses that the new ambassadors serving as a bridge of communication and friendship between China and their respective countries. She wishes them to enjoy both work and life during their stay in China. Dear ambassadors, on behalf of the Chinese government and people, I would like to welcome you to China to assume your new posts. The international community is confronted with the sudden outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Your ambassadors of friendship from different countries and serve as bridges of communication with China. I wish you all work smoothly and enjoy a happy life in China. The head of state affirms that the Chinese have been united and worked together with people of other countries to fight the pandemic and jointly wrote a new chapter of international cooperation and friendships. South Korea still plans to import Johnson & Johnson vaccines after the increase of coronavirus cases in the country. South Korea's country health ministry records more 700 new coronavirus cases as the country battles to stem the number of infections with more testing and vaccination efforts. New cases are centered on the greater Seoul area and have spread to over a dozen cities and provinces despite rigid social distancing rules. The latest cases bringing the total to 111,419 infections with 1,782 deaths. Health authority says they were better prepared for the next wave of infections with enough sick beds and medical resources, yet warned of complacency, citing a 15% in recent nationwide weekend travels. A South Korean health official also says the country still plan to import coronavirus vaccines from Johnson & Johnson, despite a recent decision of the United States health agencies recommending a pause on the usage of the single-dose shot after reports of red blood clots from one shot. Cambodian government decreased lockdown in the capital after the spread of COVID-19 outbreak. Cambodia bring in a coronavirus lockdown in Phnom Penh and a satellite district of the capital in a bid to contain a spike in the coronavirus cases in the country that up until recently had largely managed to contain infections. Prime Minister Hun Sen announces measures more people are prohibited from leaving home except to go to work, buy food or medical treatment. Police manning checkpoints in Phnom Penh asks motorists to show work documents and identity cards in order to pass. 
Meanwhile, in a voice message posted on his official Facebook page, Hun Sen warned Cambodia was on the brink of Death Valley and urges people to work together to avoid calamity. The Southeast Asian country still has one of the world's smallest coronavirus case loads, but an outbreak had started, so cases spiked almost tenfold to 4,874 within two months, and the first deaths recorded with 36 fatalities. Hospitals in Manila are full of patients due to soaring COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. As coronavirus cases surges across the Philippines, hospitals in Manila struggle with a new influx of COVID-19 patients. The Philippines is battling one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in Asia, with many hospitals in the capital city in full capacity, while authorities face delays in delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. Hospitals, natin, talagang puno na po. Uh... hospitals here are already mostly full. It usually takes hours of waiting for patients outside emergency rooms. Sometimes patients have to wait overnight. Uh, minsan mga overnight na po silang naghihintay. Signs reading full capacity for COVID-19 cases could be seen outside of many hospitals in the capital. The Philippines reported 11,429 new coronavirus cases up sharply from around 8,000 cases reported in the past two days and confirmed coronavirus cases in the last 30 days alone reached 266,849, accounting for 30% of the country's total infections. Japanese Prime Minister arrives in the United States for a summit with Joe Biden. The meeting will be Biden's first in-person summit with a foreign leader since taking office in January. According to a senior United States administration official, Suga and Biden are expected to present a united front on Taiwan, China's most sensitive territorial issue. The last time United States and Japanese leaders referred to Taiwan in a joint statement was in 1969, when Japan's Prime Minister said maintenance of peace and security in the Taiwan area was important for its own security. That was before Tokyo normalized ties with Beijing. However, such a statement appears likely to fall short of what the United States has been hoping to see from Suga, who inherited a China policy that sought to balance security concerns with deep economic ties when he took over as a premier last September. Biden and Suga will also discuss Beijing's treatment of Muslims in the Xinjiang region and its influence over Hong Kong while also announcing a $2 billion Japanese investment in 5G telecommunications to counter China's Huawei technologies. United States seeks unity with Japan to counter Chinese assertiveness at the first White House summit. President Joe Biden sought to present a united front with Japan Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga to counter an increasingly assertive China as the United States leader held his first face-to-face -face White House summit since taking office. We can do about anything. We had a very productive discussion today. Biden hosts Suga for talks that offered the Democratic president who took office in January a chance to work further on his pledge to revitalize the United States alliance that frayed under his Republican predecessor, Donald Trump. China top agenda underscoring Japan's central role in United States efforts to face down the challenge from Beijing. Secondly, Japan and the United States are both deeply invested in innovation and looking to the future. That includes making sure we invest. Suga says he and Biden agree on the necessity of frank discussions with China in the context of Beijing's activity in the Indo-Pacific region and reaffirm the importance of the United States and Japan alliance. In another swipe at China, Biden told news conference the United States and Japan will invest together in areas such as 5G, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, genomics, and semiconductor supply chains. Suga tells Biden that he was committed to moving forward with the Summer Olympic Games in Japan and that Biden offered his support. Japan is grappling with rising coronavirus infections with fewer than 100 days from the plane start. <laughs> So, 
Well, that's for now. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, use your masks, maintain a social distancing rule, and bye.